hundred scientific papers. His area of research is neural mapping and brain connections in relation to human behavior and functions. His research projects and lectures in over 200 international conferences make him a foremost scientist of India who has served on several national and international bodies. He's a member of the Commission for Surgical Therapy for Developing Nations and fellow UCLA Los Angeles, besides being the editor, Neurology India, an executive member, Indian papers. Epilepsy Society and Secretary, Cerebrovascular Society. He has been the former president and president Skull Based Society of India and former president Asian Epilepsy Surgery Society. His prolific academic career includes a number of publications, awards, grants, lectures and patents. Relationship between food, health, and the future survival of the ecosystem and our planet. So, chaliye, abhi hum ye session mein milke participate karenge aur Dr. Sarath Chandra ji ko dhyan se sunenge. Yes, so I have unmuted. So you're able to hear me, Dasaji, now? Yes, Saraji, you are audible. Okay, namaste. So I have with me some devotees because this is going to be a one hour long class. Even though I have tried to make it as simple as possible, but I believe there could be some areas which could be a bit complex. So I have kept these devotees and I thank them for participating in this lecture. And in between, you know, I would ask for their feedbacks and if they have any questions or doubts, which I would think also would serve the audience to also consolidate to what I'm speaking. So at the outset, namaste, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever part of the planet you are seeing this program from. At the outset, I would like to express my profound sense of gratitude to Sri Amma Bhagavan Oneness Organization for having given me this opportunity to be able to talk to you on a subject which is very close to my heart since several years on how the elusive peace we so desperately seek is so closely related to food. In fact, it begins with food and how the type of food determines the future of this ecosystem as well as the planet. I initially thought I would speak on the intimate relationship of the food to mind and health. But then I thought, let me directly focus on the effects of uh, food to our health, which has got a direct and how uh, it is related to our surrounding ecosystem and also determines the survival, future survival of this planet. I have derived my talks for various scientific publications, sources on the internet, books, as well as movie documentaries. So at the outset, I would like to make a disclaimer that my talk is not uh, an original talk, rather it's been derived from a lot of sources, uh, from books, from scientific publications, from internet, as well as from documentaries. So again, acknowledgements, my immense sense of gratitude to Sri Amma Bhagavan, whose teachings have been the source of me from my heart to actually follow and understand and consolidate the teachings, what I'm telling this to you today. My immense sense of gratitude to my parents who taught me to be a vegetarian right from my birth and taught me about kindness to animals since my birth. And of course, my acknowledgements will not be complete if I do not acknowledge my wife who cooks delicious vegan dishes and my daughter who taught me, taught me a lot about vegan food. And of course, the multiple sources of published literature, which I'll be quoting during my talk. Now, there is a small disclaimer where I would like to put it on record that this talk or this presentation is being made purely on my personal choice. And it is not affiliated to my professional position or to my hospital or any other institute. So again, the disclaimer that the presentation is not original, it's based on facts available in public domain from very various sources from internet, scientific publications. So what I have done is I have kind of put uh, all the knowledge together in order to provide you a seamless thought process so that you can understand very nicely and very clearly what I want to tell you today. So Sri Amma Bhagavan has always told us that the food in our plate is a miracle. We don't realize it, but it's, it's, it's actually one of the miracles because uh, even if we try to think for it for a few minutes, 
we can see that there are so many people who would have worked hard in order to bring that plate of food on our table and it is indeed a huge industry which is growing very steadily and foods historically has been responsible for for wars for forging peace between people communities and nations so we see that whenever there are uh, delegates between two nations or state leaders between two nations meeting it always bonding always happens over food now my talk today will have three parts on how food can make us healthy on how they can prevent disease on how they can make us happy and these are the three verticals i would be concentrating on today and whenever i finish one vertical or one topic i would ask the devotees if they are okay who are is connected with me so that then i can progress to another vertical so please do kindly keep your patience and also take a pens and notebooks if you want to make some notes so let's see how food should be healthy for us now i will start historically with taking three categories of people who have been some of the fiercest uh, people or human beings who have lived on this planet and are still living and these includes the early humans who lived in the caves the gladiators we all know that they were the most fearsome fighters and the sportsmen even today now the question is are the cavemen uh, meat eaters and this has been a question which most of the scientists thought that most of the cavemen actually ate meat but surprisingly it is not so and the misconception arose because most of the archaeologists in 1930s discovered bones of animals as well as tools and they assumed that these cave men have killed animal bones but the fact is most of the plants which decay very fast could not be examined at that point of time but when technology evolved we were able to examine the micro plant fossils and it revealed that most of the early humans actually ate plant based diet and this has been well established in very prestigious scientific papers so if you see these papers it clearly shows us that all the early human ancestors were predominantly vegetarian now let's go to uh, gladiators now if you know gladiators were some of the fearsome warriors to have ever lived on this planet because their survival depended upon their strength and most of the gladiators used to die on hand to hand combat within the arenas during the roman empire uh, and now there is a place in turkey called ephesus which happens to be a gladiator graveyard with where a lot of gladiators have been uh, buried and here examination of 68 gladiators and examination over 5000 bones have shown that these bones indeed have high bone density and strength and they also have high levels of strontium and this suggested that the gladiators were kept predominantly on a vegetarian diet so strontium is a chemical or a element if it is high uh, uh, if it is high in if it is high levels in bones it indicates uh, that uh, these people are vegetarian and this has been again published in various uh, reputed scientific journals and in fact they were on a diet consisting of diet and barley and beans diet of barley and beans and they used to take uh, plant ash or bone ash for calcium sources that's the only perhaps animal source they used to have but mostly they were on a vegetarian diet now let's look at sportsmen now whenever we think of sportsmen we conjure an image that most of the sportsmen are meat eaters they eat a lot of meat in order to keep them strong in order to order to for them to have lot of stamina but in 1908 what happened was there was a british athlete called emil watt who won the 5 mile event and he stunned everybody because he was a complete vegan and people were stunned by the fact that him being a wiry vegetarian from manchester was able to win the athletics and he was the first british athlete to have won the athletics uh, athletics heritage plaque and then some years later we had pavo who won won about nine gold medals and 22 world records he was a complete vegan and then murray rose from australia who was also vegan and more recently we have so many of the athletes like edwin moses carl lewis morgan michel 
and she says that my energy level increases and stamina increases immensely when i turned very vegan and similarly the eight time us cycling champion who says that her stamina increased like anything when she became a vegan and she practically became like a machine now let us go to some big people we have been speaking about people who are wiry and thin have lot of stamina but is it possible for one to develop huge bulk of muscles eating vegan food which is a misconception many people have people think that eating vegan you just cannot develop muscles so look at these examples kendrick farris the only weightlifter to represent us in 2012 and 16 olympics uh, and he was a pure vegan patrick bomian he is said to be one of the strongest people on the planet he is a complete vegan and arnold schwarzenegger the well reputed hollywood actor who has acted in so many movies and was ex governor of california has turned now into 99% vegan and these are the examples of several other athletes not a several i would say several other people who have developed such muscles who are again vegan and you go on the internet the examples are limitless you'll find so many people so many sportsmen who have turned vegan and in india our very own virat kohli and sunil chetri are complete vegan so the question is who said that meat is healthy where did that concept start that eating meat produces muscles produces stamina allows one to become very strong where did that concept start from so interestingly if you look back in 1800 just as von liebig from britain he is said to be the modern father of the modern agriculture he said that vegetarians theoretically are incapable of prolonged exercise and i don't know on what basis it was just an assumption and he suggested that muscular energy came from meat and based on this he created his own liebig extract of meat which was a company and in order to promote this uh, meat extract he you know he created lot of uh, things like table cards menu cards children games uh, card sets calendars posters and this would be put in various hotels in order to encourage this meat extract and the meat extract became so popular that practically every one was eating it at that point of time in britain and in fact if you look at the food pyramid which is recommended by the usda where you see all the food items and then you also find the meat in one corner of the food pyramid this addition of this meat item over there was based on liebig's idea and usa recommended meat based on the liebig's idea which again you know came from just an assumption but later on it has been clearly shown that liebig's meat extract contain virtually no trace of any kind of nutrients it never it does not have fats gelatin proteins in fact it was it was completely useless but at one point of time during the influenza pandemic during the bubonic plague people used to think that unless they eat this meat extract they would not get all right and later on it has been shown that most of the theories what liebig proposed was false and today we know that muscular energy does not come from meat it comes from carbohydrates so basically carbohydrates are converted into glycogen and they provide us muscular energy so people who eat a plant based diet are able to ingest more of carbohydrates and they end up having more of stamina more of muscular energy paradoxically and this is a misconception people who eat fundamentally animal based diet have eat more of proteins and less of carbs so as a result they have loss of energy loss of stamina and fatigue and this has been shown in paper after paper if you go into the pubmed you find paper after paper showing this fact but unfortunately the concept that liebig introduced that meat is very good it provides muscular energy it enhances your muscles it makes a man out of you stuck in the minds of people and then the meat industry grew by leaps and bounds and you have this advertisements like one should eat like a man not like a rabbit and then it showed this women who are athletic the family is eating meat and again advertisement showing that you should eat like a man and again advertisement showing soldiers eating meat so this concept unfortunately stuck so people it went into the subconscious or it went into the mindset of the people that one has to consume meat in order to remain healthy now the question is how healthy is meat is it really healthy now let's understand one fundamental basis all proteins 
whether it is ingested by these poultry animals or ingested by us comes ultimately from plants we do not make proteins all the proteins ultimately come from plants so when these animals eat the plants they become the middlemen and we eat these animals and then we derive proteins from them in fact scientific studies have shown that if people eat a well balanced plant based diet they get 70% more than average proteins than the meat eaters now let's let's look at the hard statistics or hard calculations if one eats one cup of cooked lentils excuse me if one eats one cup of cooked lentils or one peanut butter sandwich this is equivalent in its protein content to 3 ounces of beef or 3 eggs so if you eat one cup of cooked lentils it's equivalent to 3 cups of egg 3 uh, eggs but again you know people say that the quality of proteins coming from animal based diet is inferior it is not as good as animal based proteins now if you break down the structure of proteins so basically protein consists of building blocks called amino acids and then the protein they have a primary structure they have a secondary structure and then they unfold again to form this kind of very complex structures but fundamentally the protein consists of amino acids now there are two types of amino acids one is non essential which can be made in the body and essential amino acids these are the nine essential amino acids which one has to take from an external source the reason being that they are not manufactured within the body now people have a misconception that plant based diet do not have a complete set of essential amino acids but it's been shown by publication after publication that by eating a diverse diet of vegetables grains and legumes you can easily complete your entire set of amino essential amino acids now look at the food stuffs which are rich in essential amino acids you have spirulina you have oatmeal you have beans you have chia seeds broccoli quinoa nuts hemp seeds nut butter so if you eat a healthy combination of all this you will be able to get a complete source of essential amino acids for yourself now what about the quality of animal proteins people think that eating animal proteins is again you know very strong why should we plant we are getting a ready made animal proteins now let's look at the baggage with which the animal proteins come so we have plants and the animals consume this proteins now every animal has to consume six times the amount of plant proteins in order to give us one time the uh, amount of protein to human beings so the ratio is six times so it's a highly ineffective mechanism and with each animal based diet we are wasting 25 liters of water so bottom line is if we eat animal based diet we are actually utilizing a very poor broker or a middleman it's like you want to buy a house so the builder is selling selling it for 1 cr and then you are contacting a middleman and he says it's 3 cr and then you are buying giving so much of money and buying from the middleman and not only that when you are using the animal proteins they come with a baggage of toxins they come with a baggage of carcinogens which can produce cancers they come with a baggage of unhealthy fats so it's like buying a house yes i heard somebody speak am i audible yes yes audible? yes 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 okay 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 so if we consume animals they give us a baggage of toxins carcinogen and unhealthy fats which lead us to disease leads us to diseases and this i will be speaking to you a few minutes from now so animals are basically poor middlemen it's not only that you are buying the house at a much expensive rate but you are buying a house which has been completely dilapidated rather than buying a brand new house from the uh, builder themselves now let us look at comparison at the structure at the molecular structure between plant proteins and animal proteins and look at the bagged bad baggage with which the animal proteins come from they come with substances like endotoxins 
they can block the blood vessels which leads to heart problems can lead to strokes can lead to loss of stamina loss of muscle power they come with a substance called tmao the tmao is a highly toxic substance which destroys the friendly gut bacteria which we have within our intestine and replaces it with the toxic bacteria so nowadays people think that the gut microbiome which are the healthy bacteria living in our gut is practically responsible for all types of diseases so there is an alteration of the gut bacteria it can lead us to various types of diseases and when we eat animal based diet there are toxins inside it like tmao which replace the friendly bacteria with toxin producing bacteria animals come with a huge amount of heterocyclic amines which are potent carcinogens they can cause cancers they come with heme iron which are again inflammatory material they destroy by inflammation i mean that they destroy the body now tmao like i was saying is a highly potent inflammatory substance and moment one eats meat or an animal based diet they go into the gut it causes severe inflammation and then it destroys the normal or the friendly gut bacteria and they are replaced by bacteria which are producing toxic substances and an alteration of gut bacteria is said to be the basis of causing most of the diseases as of now the gut microbiome theory nowadays is said to cause almost all diseases people are now starting to think that an alteration of gut bacteria can cause various diseases now this is a very interesting paper so here they have taken some healthy volunteers and they have fed them an hamburger so hamburger is you know it's a burger which is filled with uh, the cow meat or ham and then they found that with a single ingestion of hamburger everybody's triglycerides shot up with a single ingestion i'm not talking of taking hamburgers for weeks to months to years i'm talking of ingestion of one single ingestion of hamburger there was an increase in the uh, levels of triglycerides and you know triglycerides increase can lead to heart problems can lead to strokes and it also led to increase of inflammatory markers called il6 IL-6 is the same inflammatory markers which increases in COVID infection. Not just COVID, any infection which happens in the body, these inflammatory markers they increase. So ingestion of a single hamburger has led to increase of IL-6 and triglycerides, and this was shown in very nice uh, paper published in a high impact factor journal. They have shown ingesting one hamburger has increased inflammation by seventy percent. what happens when the inflammation increases when inflammation increases you know there is a destruction of the body and immediately it reflects with joint pains with soreness with osteoarthritis joint problems and ingestion of one hamburger reduces the endothelial function by 30% what is endothelium endothelium is the inner lining of the blood vessels so when there is a loss of inner lining of the blood vessels it leads to narrowing of the blood vessels and that can lead to heart problems it can lead to heart attacks it can lead to strokes and so many other problems and in the muscles especially for athletes there is endothelial dysfunction you can have severe exhaustion loss of stamina muscle pains that is why when people eat predominantly animal based diet they may develop a muscle mass but over a period of time they have severe loss of stamina because of endothelial dysfunction and it's been shown i'm not talking from my own uh, imagination there are n number of publications to demonstrate this in contrast plant proteins come with a bunch of antioxidants phytochemicals minerals and vitamins what are antioxidants so one has to understand that every time there is a disease and when cells die within our body there 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 are released something called as free radicals and these free radicals are extremely toxic substances in fact free radicals are also been implicated for aging process they say that there is a release of free radicals and this actually leads to uh, aging process so if you eat plant based diets they have a counter substance called antioxidants which can very nicely neutralize this free radicals so they will heal and fight inflammation they will optimize the gut microbiome they will enhance the uh, general regeneration of friendly gut bacteria they will improve the blood supply 
and most of the antioxidants are from a plant based diet so these are the foods which are rich in antioxidants and these are the foods which have also been suggested to be taken during covid because they enhance immunity and they also uh, provide a lot of antioxidants which are also necessary to fight covid so even in covid the cytokine reaction which happens is because of release of free radicals and if you need to fight them you need to take rich foods which are rich in antioxidants and if you consume this food it will heal you it will increase your stamina and it will even slow down your aging and in the same study they have shown that by replacing the hamburger with an avocado there was a 70% reversal of inflammation in one week i'm not talking of days weeks and months or years i'm talking of one week finding there was a reversal of inflammation by 70% and again endothelial dysfunction has reduced by almost 30% Uh, in week three, and there are n number of scientific publications which have shown this, uh, refuted this fact. So, what are the myths which need to be busted? The first myth is you don't need to consume every essential amino acid with every plant-based diet. If you eat a proper mix of healthy plant-based diet, you will be able to get all the essential amino acids for your diet. animal proteins are not of higher quality in fact they come with a very bad baggage of toxins uh, with carcinogens with uh, cancer producing substances and there is something else called as insulin growth factor insulin like growth factor which is called as igf1 now there is a hypothesis that there are dormant cancer cells in all of us so there is a hypothesis that all of us have cancer cells but they are sleeping that is what is meant by dormant and once they are exposed to this insulin like growth factor there is a sudden activity of cancer cells and this has been shown in laboratory conditions so in laboratory conditions they have taken this petri dishes they have put uh, cancer cells there sleeping cancer cells or dormant cancer cells there and they have exposed it to insulin like growth factor and then they suddenly found that there was an enhanced activity of the cancer cells and they start multiplying very fast so animals have been at least on experimental settings they have been shown that the igf1 which is there in animal diet can trigger off the sleeping cancer cells to convert them into active cancer cells excuse me so a whole food based on containing all essential amino acids more than enough for you there is another misconception that only vegans need supplements now the bottom line is everybody needs supplements nowadays because we are eating super washed foods we are eating foods which have been completely washed of all the nutrients and i'll talk about it a bit later there is also another misconception that vegans need dairy milk to get calcium and those advertisements literally got you so one has to understand that green leafy vegetables tofu have better calcium than dairy milk so look at the calcium rich plant diets so you can eat collard greens broccoli kale oranges soya bok choy figs these are highly nutritious in calcium and then there is another concern regarding vitamin d so as you know vitamin d is an essential supplement which we require and it is made in sunlight but now vitamin d is deficient in most of us because all of us are restricting our outdoor activities we no more go out we so india in india even though we get a lot of sunlight but unfortunately we are now sitting behind the computers in air conditioned rooms and that's the reason why most of the indians are deficient in vitamin d so a deficiency of vitamin d can lead to weak bones not only weak bones they can also precipitate malignancy and if you look at sources of vitamin d you have mushrooms mushrooms are also rich sources of selenium and then you have soya fortified soya milk or fortified almond milk or fortified orange juice and of course do not hesitate to have plenty of sunshine if you take plenty of sunshine it will definitely build up your vitamin d and do not hesitate to take external supplements because they are easily available now come to the question of vitamin b12 you know people say that why do vegans have low level of vitamin b12 now this is a missing piece of puzzle so what you have to understand is that vitamin b12 is neither produced by plants or neither it is produced by animals they are produced by certain bacteria around the roots of plants now in the earlier days when people used to consume vegetables they wouldn't wash it so much 
and as a result we would consume those bacteria and as a result we would have enough vitamin b12 but nowadays because of the use of herbicides because of the use of pesticides all the vegetables are super washed so as a result all this bacteria containing vitamin b12 are killed so as a result we do not have enough vitamin b12 supplements and this can be easily fulfilled by taking vitamin b12 supplements and again i have found that these are the rich plant sources of vitamin b12 what i mentioned here so i have now finished the first part where i have spoken on how you should stay healthy so in summarizing if you take plant based diet they come with a baggage which is very good they have antioxidants they have minerals they have phytochemicals and you are ingesting the proteins directly from nature whereas if you are ingesting animal based proteins you are ingesting a proteins which is absolutely ineffective because a plant needs to eat six times the amount of protein in order for you to get one time the protein from the plant and animal based diet comes with the baggage of endotoxins with the heterocyclic amines which are carcinogens and they come with inflammatory markers they come with substances which can actually convert your sleeping cancer cells in your body into active cancer cells and they can lead to destruction of your blood vessels which can again lead to heart problems which can lead uh, to strokes which can lead to loss of stamina of muscle muscle weakness and so many other problems so this is what we have covered in the first part so before i go to the second part i would like to ask uh, some people who are connected with me whether the first part has been clear for them or they would like to ask a couple of questions and again these questions reiterate or consolidate the knowledge of the entire audience who are watching this presentation so am i clear here amit ji yes sir saraj ji it was very very clear to me thank you okay wonderful so i assume it's been clear to others also and let's proceed on to the next part on we need to eat food in order to prevent disease but are we achieving that goal as of today and here i am providing a list of all the animal based diet and let's examine each one of them now a decade ago it became very well known that eating processed meat increases the risk of colonic cancer by 20% which means out of 5 people consuming processed meat one person will go ahead to develop colonic cancer and you don't have to eat eat a lot of meat just taking 50 grams of processed meat increases the risk of colorectal cancer by 20% and this has been proven without doubt by several scientific publications to the extent that who has categorized processed meat in the same league as rest of the carcinogens like tobacco smoking and asbestos you can look up on the website of who they have kept processed meat in the same league as tobacco smoking and asbestos in terms of causing cancer which means that every time you serve your child processed meat i think it would be healthier to serve the child cigarettes rather than processed meat or every time somebody is eating taco hamburgers basically it means that you are eating burgers which have uh, cigars within them now let's look at another problem obesity and diabetes a developed country like us has two thirds of the population completely obese there are 450 million people worldwide with diabetes and it is estimated that in 25 years one out of every 3 person will have diabetes can you fathom that can you comprehend this one out of every 3 person will be on insulin will have diabetes now what causes diabetes there has been a long misconception that diabetes is caused by high sugary foods or by eating carbohydrates it's true that carbohydrates or sugary foods may aggravate diabetes but the diabetes is precipitated not by sugary foods it's precipitated by eating fat typically a meat based diet and for those of you who want to read more about it i will suggest that you can read this book by dr neil bernard program for reversing diabetes where he speaks that how diabetes is produced by eating a typical fat based meal typically is derived from meat and there have been very reputable large scientific studies like the epic interact study which has shown 
that one can reduce the incidence of type 2 diabetes by substituting red and processed meat with other protein sources uh, like yogurt nuts or cereals so once you stop eating processed meat the incidence of diabetes comes down and there have been many other studies to show that red and processed meat increase the risk of coronary artery disease which is a heart disease or type 2 diabetes and these are all published and well accepted scientific publications in fact there is one paper which says that one serving of processed meat every day increases the risk of diabetes by 50% just one serving of processed meat so if you look at processed meat not only it causes cancers in one fifth of the people and it's recognized by who but it releases toxins in the gut it gets deposited in the blood vessels like i've told you earlier and leads to a host of problems like dementia loss of memory strokes heart attacks and diabetes then people say okay red meat is bad let's talk about white meat so this chicken is white meat why can't we eat because white meat is healthy and again this is a misconception which has been generated by false advertising you have to understand that all the processed chicken there is huge large quantity of sodium injected into it in fact each chicken has about 800 mg of sodium injected inside it and ingestion of sodium can lead to a lot of diseases including blood pressure and all the fast food outlets have chicken loaded with heterocyclic amines and this is a potent carcinogen it causes cancer and it doesn't get destroyed whether you heat it or you cook it and it's from chicken and look at the scientific literature people who are ingesting hetero heterocyclic amines have a four fold increase of prostate cancers and chicken is loaded with cholesterol what does cholesterol know or does everybody one of us every each and every one of us knows it's bad for the heart it's bad for the brain and not to say our indian preparations have 10 times more oil and butter in our non vegetarian preparations so un unless our preparations are literally floating in oil and butter we cannot digest or we cannot eat our non vegetarian preparations so it's only left to your imagination of the kind of havoc and damage it produces on the body people again say that you know in my family nobody has had an heart attack so i will not have or oh, my genes are very strong yes genetics could play a role but you have to understand the most important triggering factor are environmental factors and in the environmental factor food is the most important triggering factor for a disease now let's look at eggs sometime ago you know the egg industry went on uh, promoting eggs saying that eggs are very healthy now if you look at the yolk of the egg which is a yellow white yellow portion of the egg it's nothing but a concentrate of cholesterol and saturated fat now all of us know what cholesterol does to our heart as well as to the brain but then people say the saturated fats are okay now there are so many publications saying saturated fats are okay but you have to understand it's not just saturated fat you are taking this fat with a baggage of toxic substances what i mentioned earlier like endotoxins tmao heterocyclic amines heme iron which produce a lot of inflammation can precipitate cancer and can cause heart disease and can cause uh, strokes and surprisingly if you look at papers which say that saturated fats are okay i have gone through a lot of them they are supported by the very organizations against whom we are uh, saying that they should not be consumed for instance this paper which says that this study has shown that saturated fats are okay and is supported by whom by the national dairy council similarly there is another paper which is funded by the egg board and egg nutrition center so very uh, the very industry against whom we are trying to find out that whether these foods are good or bad is actually supporting the scientific papers it's like asking the tobacco industry to let us know the benefits of smoking they will always say that smoking is if you have their way they will always say that smoking is healthy for your health and that is what was happening in 1940s and i will tell you about it in a few minutes from now now let's come to cow's milk i think as a country we are obsessed with cow's milk you know our mothers will not let our children sleep at night unless they have given a full glass of cow's milk and you know cow's milk is an occasion we have to drink four or five teas which is filled with milk sugar and unless we consume teas or coffees like that we are not happy but the fact is 
cow's milk is for the calf it's not for humans humans is the only animal on this planet which drinks milk from another animal and how cheesy and how freaky is that and how pervert is that no other animal on this planet drinks the milk of another baby and it's not surprising when you're ingesting proteins of another animal it leads to problem like acne eczema constipation lot of people have allergic reactions against cow milk but they don't realize it they don't think that it is because of cow's milk and they keep on drinking cow's milk now cow's milk is fundamentally for the calf if you look at growth of calf a calf has 90% of body growth in one year whereas a human baby has 90% development of the brain in one year so human milk is customized for human baby because it leads to optimal development of brain in 90% so you see a human baby after one year it's almost the same size but the brain has developed by 90% in contrast to a calf a calf develops 90% of the body growth but hardly any brain growth and that's the reason you know cow's milk is one of the most allergenic food on this planet 40 to 60% of the people are lactose intolerant in this globe people do not realize it but year after year day after day they keep on drinking milk and not only that the milk is packed with hormones like estrogen and progesterone and that plays a havoc on your body in addition the milk has something called as caseins and this caseins is converted into casein or casein morphins and this casein morphin latch on to exactly those receptors or those substances in human body to which opioid substances like morphine or nicotine or even marijuana or even cocaine latches on to in the sense that more and more milk you consume you develop a kind of addiction because the casein present in the milk is being converted into casein morphine and that has an addictive quality most of the milk from cow is filled with pus even the usda have said that it is all right to have 750000 pus cells per cc of milk that is what the usda has said for a developed country like united states most of the cows from whom we are deriving milk are sick they have mastitis they have abscesses and they are actually excreting pus cheese is actually coagulated cow pus can you imagine that you have pus you have an injury and it forms a pus you are actually coagulating and eating that milk is packed with hormones like estrogen and progesterone and again this can play havoc on your body and again can lead to various cancers so this study shows that milk can play havoc on your body and it reduces your own testosterone and estrogen and again that leads to infertility it lead to an inability for you to conceive a child i don't know for some reason for some weird reason people drink a glass of milk on the day of marriage but it acts on the reverse manner you drink milk it actually reduces your testosterone and estrogen levels and in addition it increases your cortisol levels cortisol levels are stress hormones so they will reduce the muscle mass and they will make you feel more uh, you know anxiety they will produce more anxiety and eating a plant based diet has shown that it reduces cortisol in your body in a matter of 3 to 4 days just 3 to 4 days of consuming plant diet can reverse the effect of cortisol which is derived from milk and animal based diet now interestingly there is a condition called as sarcopenia many of you would not have heard about it but it's a very interesting condition it's a condition where people as they age they develop extreme amount of muscle loss muscle atrophy and baggy skin so you would have seen some individuals who by the age of 60 70 would look almost like 80 years of age because there is a severe atrophy of muscles so muscles are completely lost and they have this baggy skin so by the time they 65 they look as if they are 90 years old this condition medically is called as sarcopenia so it's a loss of extreme loss of muscle mass it's a disproportionate loss of muscle mass you see some people even if they are 80 years they look absolutely young they don't have so much of wrinkles or loss of muscle mass or sagging of skin so sarcopenia has been shown to be very much linked to a animal based diet people who eat an animal based diet will age faster 
and by 60 or 70 years of age they will look like somebody who is 80 or 90 years of age and there are many papers which have been published for instance casein getting converted to caseomorphin in the milk has been shown to be related to autism so the high incidence of autism in developed countries has been shown to because of ingestion of high amounts of cow's milk and even schizophrenia it has been shown that caseomorphin is responsible for schizophrenia and mental disorders and these are scientific papers which are speaking and cheese definitely is unhealthy because it contains high amount of fat cholesterol sodium it can precipitate heart diseases diabetes alzheimers uh, and in addition it's addictive because cheese is converted into caseomorphin in your body now let's come to fishes people think excuse me so people think fishes are healthy okay they could be healthy by their own but the fact is most of our fishes as of now are loaded with a highly toxic carcinogenic cancer producing substance called as methyl mercury so most of the fish fishes have high levels of mercury every fish has mercury there are fishes which have low levels of mercury there are fishes which have high levels of mercury but the bottom line is that fishes are loaded with mercury and in fact if you take fishes from indian rivers not only they have high levels of mercury but they also have this herbicides pesticides factory effluents and there are villages down west bengal where they have a high incidence of cancer because they predominantly live on fish diet which are fished out of this highly polluted rivers and they are loaded with mercury pesticides and herbicides and then people think that fishes are low in cholesterol maybe some kind of fishes like tuna but there are other fishes who have which has much more cholesterol than a pork chop or even an egg or a chicken so fishes are unhealthy because they have high levels of toxins like mercury pesticides and herbicides farm fishes are no bad because no better because they are fed again with antibiotics and antifungal drugs and you are again ingesting them and there are so many publications which have shown the bad effect or the deleterious effects of methyl mercury it can cause breast cancer it can cause dementias or cognitive deficits and so many other problems and now let us come to the final catch which is the effect of environmental pollution on meat and dairy products now most of the factories in the smoke they produce a substance called as a dioxin and this is hardly talked about but if you look in the literature it's very well mentioned dioxin is the most toxic man made substance on this planet and it can cause all kinds of cancers in the body all kinds of cancers if a person breathes factory air he will perhaps take 14 years to have dioxin levels in their body but if he eats an animal based diet like poultry like cow or a sheep or a chicken you know, or even milk and dairy products he is going to in a very short period of time he is body is going to get loaded with dioxins and why does this happen because the cows eat grass which is not washed it is loaded with dioxin the sheep eat grass because it is again loaded with the dioxin we wash our vegetables but the cows we don't wash the vegetables and give it to cows and this dioxin goes and gets deposited within the poultry and you have to understand once you have dioxin in your body there is no way you can excrete the dioxin it's there permanently in your body it will stay in your body till it produces cancer the only way that a lady could remove some of the dioxins from her body is through childbirth where a lot of dioxins will go along with the child or through breastfeeding there is no other way for a man to remove dioxins from his or her body his body from his body and you have to understand you know, eating poultry products eating meat is perhaps the fastest way to get dioxin toxicity because we do not wash the vegetables or the grass which we feed to the animals and there are a host of other diseases which are associated called as zoonotic diseases i will not mention them but i will definitely talk about brucellosis which was an epidemic recently it can cause flu like symptoms fever weakness malaise 
very similar to covid it had come out in newspapers and we are very well aware about the swine influenza virus and covid 19 through which we are going again it has been a jump from bats <clears throat> i will not complete my talk without telling you something about prion diseases because this is something which people rarely know or understand and it has a very interesting story so excuse me and let me sip some water now in an island of papua new guinea there were a group of tribals who used to have this strange disease where they would have this wasting of muscles they would lose their memory they would become bedridden they will become double incontinent which means that they are passing both stools and urines on the bed and then they would die and they would get the disease by the time they were just 10 or 15 years of age and this tribe was known and this disease was called as kuru and then this gentle this scientist called dr gadju gadjusek he got a nobel prize for this he went and spent several years with this tribal people and then he found a strange custom that this tribal people had he found that these tribal people whenever one of the relatives used to die they used to break open his skull or her skull and eat the raw brain material as a mark of respect towards their dead relative that was their custom and they have been doing it for years so dr gadjusek proposed that there is some kind of an infectious particle which is being transmitted through eating of the dead meats uh, dead relatives meat especially the brain which is causing them this kind of problem and if you once this person dies if you open the brain and see you find that the whole brain looks like a sponge that is why it's called a spongiform encephalopathy and it is transmitted by a kind of infectious particle which is called as a slow virus this virus cannot be killed by heating or by cooking because it's not an infectious particle but it goes inside it is a degree less even virus is not in a live particle live particle but this is a degree less than the usual viral infections and there are a host of these diseases which are now recognized to be prion diseases and most common is creutzfeldt jakob disease we see such cases maybe about two or three times a month we don't know how people get these diseases but the fact is this disease is 100% fatal so if a person gets this disease there is no way you can improve there is no treatment the person will progressively go down he will lose his memory he will become bedridden he will pass urine and stool on the bed and then finally die a miserable death and these diseases are incurable they are fatal why am i speaking about this come back down by another 40 years you would have heard about the mad cow disease so mad cow disease was nothing but a prion disease happening in cows and when they opened up the brains they found that the whole brains were destroyed and that's why it was caused as bovine spongiform encephalopathy bovine stands in latin for cows spongiform because you can see this sponge like destruction of the brain encephalopathy is again a latin term for uh, some kind of brain disease and why did this disease happen in cows it happened in cows because when these cows were butchered all the residue meat was put in a grinder they used to create a liquid gruel and they used to feed the other cows before they were being butchered can you imagine a more cruel thing happening where rather than feeding plants to the cow you are actually feeding a dead gruel of its relatives of its butchered relatives and one of the cows caught the prion disease and it's called as mad cow because the cow becomes sick cannot you know and because of this thousands of cows were slaughtered in uk and usa why am i saying this i'm saying this because the only way you can diagnose a mad cow disease is if you do the autopsy of the brain now most of the cows which are slaughtered are very sick most of the cows have abscesses and they are these abscesses are opened up so that the pus comes out before the cows are slaughtered in a very cruel manner and the milk is sucked out from the cow cows till they bleed and when the cows fall sick without any examination they are just slaughtered the slaughter speed in countries like usa is about 220 cows an hour 
which means there is less than 10 seconds to slaughter a cow which again means that if any cow has a mad cow disease there is no way we would come to know about it and there has been precedence there have been six cases of mad cow disease which have been reported in usa the only way you can diagnose this condition is when you do a brain biopsy otherwise you cannot prove that the cow has mad cow disease but unfortunately cows are slaughtered faster than that cows are slaughtered in most of the cow farming uh, cow farms at the rate of 220 cows an hour so i will end the second part with a very somber thought i know i have shown some things which could be disturbing for you but there are several other disturbing things which i have not shown to you and it suffices for you to understand that when we ingest this animal based diet it leads us to a host of diseases which i have shown you could be cancer could be autoimmune diseases like lupus multiple sclerosis prion diseases hypertension sacropenia strokes liver and kidney failure infections dementia so many the list is absolutely endless now i would like to show you this video about this doctor for some reason the audio is not coming but you could read the subtitles below and i will read the subtitles so it says hello my name is dr brook goldner i am a board certified physician and i am specialized in diseases reversal using nutrition and now before i became a doctor i was actually a patient i was diagnosed at 16 years with lupus i had stage 4 kidney failure I had blood clots that caused many strokes that i had endured for years of chemotherapy steroids just to survive now i have learned and has never helped me with my health it was always about survival i did 3 years of genetic research at carnegie mellon i went to medical school i was a chief resident and yet i was still needed to take medicine to survive 12 years i was sick and then 15 years ago i changed my diet to a plant based diet i got rid of dairy no animal products and within 3 months the lupus was gone i have been healthy for the past 15 years no sign of disease i have had children i have dedicated my life to this and over the past decade i have helped thousands of people reverse lupus rheumatoid arthritis multiple sclerosis diabetes heart disease number one killer by getting them to stop eating meat and dairy and eggs and focus on vegetables and high nutrient plant foods and the results are consistent and profound as a doctor my colleagues can attest to the fact that we are all chasing down an epidemic of disease that we cannot hope to catch up or overtake because people are getting sicker with every meal they eat but you can make the difference because people don't know who to trust the dietary guidelines say that people should be focusing on a plant based diet diet full of vegetables fruits and they should be eliminating meat and dairy they will at least have the right for information to start making this listen to both as a doctor and desperately trying to save lives and as a former patient who has almost died many times because i didn't have this information i beseech you to take this seriously that this decision of what is recommended to the public about what they should eat and what they should not is what is decided by the industry and not by what is good for human health people are suffering and dying right now because of lack of this information so i ask you to seriously take that i ask you to take that seriously because the literature is clear and the results we see are true when you eliminate meat dairy and eggs people health gets better so please recommend a plant based diet to encourage people to limit or eliminate animal food so that we can save lives please help me with this mission i appreciate your attention so this came as a whatsapp forward and it's a very powerful message so i will go to the final part of my lecture so before this again i will request the people are joined with me whether have been clear with the second part of my lecture on how to avoid diseases by eating the right kind of food yes have sir I been, have i been clear in my talk yes yes sir yes sir yes. yes. wonderful now i will go to the last part of the talk saying how to eat the proper food so that we can be healthy we can be happy we can be happy only when the ecosystem surrounding us is happy so is the ecosystem around us healthy let's look at that now here i will take you to a place called duplin north carolina in united states of america which is home to one of the biggest pig farms on the planet it is home to 10 million pigs who are obviously were slaughtered for the meat 
now an adult pig produces 8 to 10 times more stools or feces than human beings which means that this 10 million pigs are producing feces equivalent to 100 million humans and how is this feces disposed of even in a developed country like us there is no waste treatment they are mixed into water and they are released directly into the fields as a result of which most of the people who are living around are miserable and have multiple diseases and there is a water body pollution and the fishes are dying and this is a situation i'm speaking about in usa now look at the statistics you are going to be horrified 79 billion animals are killed for human consumption every year for a human population of 8 billion which means we are producing food or we are consuming food equivalent to 500 million people because each animal consumes six times the plant food which is required for a human being that's why i multiplied 79 into 6 and this is equivalent to 60 times the present human population so in effect by eating animal based food we are eating 60 times the amount of food that this planet can provide to us and what is this leading to this is leading to cutting off various forests because we need to produce fodder severe environmental pollution i'm not saying this there are hundreds and hundreds of publications neat effluents are going into water bodies there is complete uh, pollution of the river bodies fishes are dying now if you look at the globe like a perpetual motion machine perpetual motion machine is a concept by physicists who says that it's a machine which can go on forever so our beautiful planet is like a perpetual motion machine on the left side we have living beings like the plant life and the plankton in the sea which produces oxygen and they depend on the food derived from animals on the right side we have the human which is the biggest footprint in animals and then we have the poultry which again is causing the biggest possible carbon footprint now what is happening the poultry is eating six times the amount of plant sources and it is consuming all the water 25 liters for every meal it's consuming so as a result the entire perpetual motion machine has become skewed it's no more equivalent so the footprint of the plankton in the sea and the plant life is progressively reducing because most of this being used is being used by the poultry which we are using it as a food source and what could be the possible alternatives as a consequence of this there are only two consequences of this there is no third consequence the first consequence is that obviously the plant the whole planet may stop that could be the end of all or we could get eliminated that's the only way these are the only two options which can happen if the world was to go on to a plant based diet today we would create a green space equivalent to the size of africa and that itself is enough to counter the all vehicular traffic and environmental pollution we don't need to do anything else so the question is how do i start there are people who have been eating meat for years they just cannot live without meat but you have to understand that there have been people who have switched over from a animal based diet to plant based diet i think it starts with you this lecture has to create a big impact with you and you should create a plan for gradual transition like anol shaws was never introduced for people who are eating animal based diet i'm not talking about people who are eating only plant based diet so he introduced the concept of meatless mondays and look at this what this meatless monday says so going meatless on monday will reduce your heart disease obesity risk of cancer stroke diabetes will save 133 gallons of water save water will save energy will save reduce the carbon footprint by 8 pounds will reduce a family's grocery budget by 4 dollars by going meatless on mondays and if he all americans participated it would prevent billions of animals going or being farm produced develop a habit of taking a healthy mix of vegetable carbs and etc take adequate supplements like vitamin d3 b12 algae based omega oils these are easily available over the counter 
do not hesitate to speak to your friends and family i see that there are certain uh, you know interactions where you know you just cannot speak about vegetarian diet people will just laugh of this is oh ho 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 you know i i do not believe oh wonderful but it's time that we started speaking about a plant based diets and its health benefits once you start the plant based diets you will realize that you love it you realize that a plant based diet does wonders for humans animals and mother earth now why doesn't everybody know about this let me take back you by 40 years even though the vegan and vegetarian awareness is increasing but it's not fast enough but if you look in 1940s cigarette smoking was actually considered healthy and you had these advertisements with successful people and you know very beautiful women drinking uh, smoking cigarettes and even children there was an advertisement saying that earlier you start the better and they were you know 6 month old children starting to smoke cigarettes and this was the uh, this was what was happening in 1940s and there were ad advertisements to show that soldiers of second world war nurses of second world war then sportsmen smoking cigarettes and then this very famous baseball athlete called baby ruth who endorsed a certain uh, type of cigarettes and ultimately died of lung cancer and then this advertisement showing that athletes relax during the tokyo summer olympics by smoking uh, so this went on for a long time people used to uh, say that smoking is not related to cancer and then when the statistics came up fit people fought tooth and nail because the cigarette smoking industry is huge look at this thing published in the paper they say yes smoking is related to cancer but statistics are disputed and who are the people talking about it five people among this nine eight people are smokers and they have eight asterisks distributed among them so you have to understand it took 60 years and again there was advertisements of doctor smoking and then there were articles coming coming up to say that there is no proof that smoking cigarette smoking causes cancer then there were some eminent scientists saying that our brand of cigarettes is as pure as water it took us 60 not even 60 years it took us 80 years from 1940 before we have started putting up these pictures on the cigarette packets where we understand that smoking causes cancer but even then there are millions of people who still continue to smoke can you understand what is the situation for animal based diet there is an amount of evidence huge amount of evidence showing that egg consumption leads to cardiovascular disease meat intake is associated with higher death rate cancers milk leads to higher mortality but these are controlled by huge corporates powerful corporates and their game is to introduce an element of doubt so they will publish articles like why all humans need to eat meat for health and anybody who is addicted to meat will say oh okay 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 there is not enough evidence okay okay i can still eat meat let me eat meat because meat is so addictive that once you eat it's very difficult for people to let go of that what is happening on a planet we have we are eating bad food animal based diet filled with fats carcinogenic it's leading to sickness and even in countries like us they spend 1.5 trillion us dollars on diabetes cancer and heart disease just this and if you look at 1.5 trillion dollars it becomes the 10th richest country in the world just the amount of expenditure which is spent on diabetes cancer and heart disease makes this industry the 10th richest country in the world and there is enough fodder or enough material for the media to publish more polarity more business and there is a multi billion dollar business but the sad part is whatever junk we are creating on this planet it stays on this planet there is nothing called throwing out of this planet there is an immediate need to create a green world because shift of food industry to produce plant based diet would be the only way for the human beings to survive before i end my talk i would like to say that in this lecture i have not spoken about the intense cruelty met it out to this poor helpless creatures being one of the reasons for us to stop eating animal based diet i have not spoken about the tortures committed to this helpless creatures so that the food we eat could become a shade tastier i will not speak about the unspeakable manner in when which these creatures are raised before being slaughtered or how they scream before the death they face death 
no sir i will not speak about how calves are slaughtered in front of the mothers as soon as they born so that we could relish the tender calf meat nor i will speak about animals who suffer from intense sickness disease and suffering before they meet their premature unfortunate ending but yes i will definitely say this much that the very animals we are eating are killing us and not too slowly we have a huge chunk of human population who are burdened with diseases like heart ailments atherosclerosis strokes obesity diabetes just to mention a few we are just a few years before we can lose a large footprint of our race succumbing to various illnesses in a matter of years because in our own petty thinking we are failing to see the big picture in that so called tasty meal made out of some unfortunate animal we fail to see how our body is crumbling collapsing and degenerating in that few seconds of monetary greed momentary greed in the lifeline of evolution we are failing to see that the so called commodity called money which we have created could last only as long as we are healthy and beyond that it is meaningless like dr roberts editor of american journal of cardiology says although we think we are and we act as if we were human beings are not natural carnivores that is we have not been built to eat meat when we kill animals to eat them they end us end up killing us because in their flesh it contains cholesterol saturated fat which was never meant or intended for human beings who are natural herbivores or plant based eaters i will conclude by give, posing this one question if we could live a happy healthy life without harming others why couldn't we let's make peace with our food first thank you very much